This represents a turning point for the people of this country. We are determined to take our country back. We're going to fulfill the promises of Donald Trump. That's what we believed in. That's why we voted for Donald Trump, because he said he's going to take our country back. And that's what we got to do. The alt-right, the self-described politically incorrect provocateurs who on the surface appear to be a grassroots conservative political movement, waging war on what they call cultural Marxism, a term which is strikingly similar to cultural Bolshevism, which was a term used by Adolf Hitler and the Nazis to demonize modernist movements in the arts. Many alt-right leaders and neo-Nazis engage in the same social circles, the same racist and pseudoscientific think tanks, engage in white identity politics, use the same racist symbols and dog whistle messaging, and their policy proposals are identical to those of neo-Nazis. This is not to say everyone who considers themselves alt-right thinks highly of Nazism. The movement is very much aimed at recruiting citizens who oppose Nazism but are culturally conservative and fearful of social and ethnic changes. The alt-right also targets those with anti-feminist and anti-SJW sentiments, painting themselves as civil rights heroes waging war on political correctness. I've come around to believe that actually having Trump in the White House would be wonderful. He represents the best hope we have of smashing political correctness apart, of uh, breaking open, you know, all of the taboos, the things, stuff you're not supposed to say, allowing real debate to be had again. The alt-right uses the justifiable anger the white working class feels and channels that anger from the real cause of their oppression to other working class people of different ideological, religious, and ethnic backgrounds. Get out of my country. Get out. This is Not my, about I'm, you. A, I'm a U.S. citizen too. Well, whatever. No, Univision, no. This works out fabulously for the billionaire class that gets to operate above the fray as the working class fights over breadcrumbs. One by one, he attacked each minority and he split them off one from the other. These men were all fellow Germans when they came here today. Now they were split into rival groups, suspicious of each other, hating each other. They were being swindled. All of them. But the man who was really being fooled was Hans. He was pure German, according to Nazi standards. To him, they promised everything, and he fell for it. You see, we human beings are not born with prejudices. Always they are made for us, made by someone who wants something. Remember that when you hear this kind of talk. One of the billionaires who benefits from a divided working class is Robert Mercer who bankrolled the alt-right website Breitbart News to the tune of $10 million. With this kind of cash flow, Breitbart was able to ascend to being the 29th most popular site in America, with over 2 billion views per year. It's also the most linked to site on both Facebook and Twitter. Breitbart News was headed by former Goldman Sachs executive Steve Bannon. Bannon proudly proclaimed that Breitbart News was the platform for the alt-right in 2016. And it truly was. Breitbart ran misleading and factually inaccurate stories as well as stories that ramped up fear against Muslims, immigrants, and blacks. So they made a $10 million investment in Breitbart. They owned it, co-owned it. They, they became the sponsors really behind it. And it's interesting to me that one of the things I learned was that Rebecca Mercer, um, this heiress, who's had no experience in politics, is so immersed in, in running Breitbart News at this point. There is a force behind Breitbart News that people don't realize, and it's the Mercer family. It became very important, increasingly, on the fringe of, of conservative politics because it pushed the conservatives um, in this country towards this, this economic nationalism, nativism, anti-immigration, pro, you know, harsh borders, anti-free trade, um, protectionist, and it spoke the language of populism. It became a, um, a as Bannon had said, a platform for the alt-right. In an interview in 2016, Bannon gave us a glimpse into his psychology. Dick Cheney, Darth Vader, Satan, that's power. It only helps us when leftists get it wrong, when they're blind to who we are and what we're doing. To find out what Breitbart News is doing, you need to follow the money. 
specifically the money of hedge fund executive Robert Mercer, who is described by a source close to him as a libertarian who despises the Republican establishment. Mercer is connected to the psychological warfare operation known as Cambridge Analytica, which forms psychological profiles of social media users and targets their emotions. Where Mercer goes, Cambridge Analytica isn't far behind. After Mercer started backing Donald Trump, Cambridge Analytica became an indispensable asset to the Trump machine. Sitting on Cambridge Analytica's board was Steve Bannon, who became an advisor to the Trump campaign and later Donald Trump's chief White House strategist. Cambridge Analytica also worked on behalf of the pro-Brexit campaign in the UK, aligning itself with white nationalists. Brexit could also make Britain more subordinate to the US empire. In 2016, Cambridge Analytica executive Alexander Nix boasted about just how much the company knows about American citizens. Today in the United States, we have somewhere close to four or 5,000 data points on every individual. So we model the personality of every adult across the United States, some 230 million people. It's clear that the psychological warfare operations conducted by the far right have made white supremacist ideas more palatable to many Americans seeking answers to why they feel the system is so rigged against them. This election is the first election in American history that is being fought not on uh, foreign policy and not on economics, it's being fought culturally. Mercer has also donated $45 million to far-right political campaigns and another $62 million to right-wing research organizations and think tanks including the Heritage Foundation, the Federalist Society, and the Media Research Center. He also funded global warming denial and initiatives to reinstate the gold standard. It's clear Mercer is trying to mold the conservative grassroots into thinking just like him. Alt-right is a term popularized by white supremacist Richard Spencer, who is president of the National Policy Institute, a white supremacist think tank. Spencer has stated that the Ron Paul revolution gave birth to the alt-right back in 2008. In the alt-right's origins, when we were first using this term, it was a lot hazier than it is now. Uh, so there's some there's an interesting article by Kevin Deanna actually um, uh, called "What Is the Alt Right in 2009?" and we were actually talking about the Ron Paul movement. We were talking more about libertarianism and and uh, anti-war uh, matters and so on. So it we hadn't fully evolved to where we are now. Spencer has called for what he describes as peaceful ethnic cleansing. He also supported Donald Trump in the 2016 presidential election and called his victory the victory of the will, a phrase which resembles the title of the Nazi propaganda film Triumph of the Will. Immediately after the election of Donald Trump, Spencer gave a speech at an alt-right conference where he quoted Nazi propaganda, prompting the attendees to give the Nazi salute, as Spencer proclaimed, Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! <laughs> What about the term neo-Nazi? No, we are, we're not a neo-Nazi, we're not the KKK, we're not any of that stuff. Spencer led a torch-lit march in Charlottesville, Virginia to protest the removal of the statue of Confederate Commander Robert E. Lee. The marchers cheered, you will not replace us, and blood and soil. Only Europeans could be the first ones to go to space. I object to being called a white supremacist because it's simply not true. Only Europeans could build something as magnificent as, as uh, uh, St. Paul's Cathedral or St. Peter's Cathedral. I object to being called a white supremacist because it's simply not true. Only Europeans could engage in the kind of scientific discovery that we engage with, that, that will to kind of keep going, that will to follow reason to its very limit, even if it shatters every everything you thought before. I object to being called a white supremacist because it's simply not true. There's only Europeans have went through these tumults of reformations, of enlightenment, of you know turning on ourselves. Only Europeans can be like this. I am not a white supremacist. I do object to that. What you're witnessing is the implosion of identity politics. The National Policy Institute, which is now headed by Richard Spencer, was founded by William Regnery, a white supremacist who inherited immense family wealth. The premature death of NPI co-founder Sam Francis, who was a brilliant 
arresting figure. He was at a tragic loss. However, his death has been redeemed by Richard Spencer, who I must say, who has parenthetically secured my place in history by my simple decision to put him in charge of NPI. The alt-right side of history will prevail. The Regnerys have had a long history in far-right politics. Regnery's grandfather, William H. Regnery, was founder of and financed the America First Committee, which was a group which lobbied and argued against going to war with Nazi Germany. The Regnery's publishing dynasty published an array of anti-Semitic, racist, and pro-eugenicist books. My support has produced a much greater bang for the buck than by the Koch brothers or Soros Incorporated. Here's to Regnery, still the most dangerous Regnery's family foundations have donated more than half a million to alt-right groups between 2001 and 2015, including the Charles Martel Society, National Policy Institute, and the New Century Foundation, which was founded by white nationalist Jared Taylor, who is also considered one of the leaders of the alt-right. Taylor made headlines during the 2016 election for his vocal support of Donald Trump. I'm Jared Taylor with American Renaissance. I urge you to vote for Donald Trump because he is the one candidate who points out that we should accept immigrants who are good for America. We don't need Muslims. We need smart, well-educated white people who will assimilate to our culture. Vote Trump. The entire left side of the American political spectrum has gone mad. Another leader of the alt-right is Milo Yiannopoulos who actually describes himself as a cultural libertarian. But that doesn't change the fact that Yiannopoulos was the senior editor for Breitbart News, which is the platform for the alt-right. Resulting from a large-scale investigation from BuzzFeed News, an array of leaked internal documents exposed the neo-Nazi inner workings of Breitbart News and how Breitbart created a safe space for racists. Yiannopoulos in particular sought input and content from white nationalists and neo-Nazis, ranging from neo-Nazi Andrew Arnheimer of the Daily Stormer, neo-reactionary Curtis Yarvin, and Devin Saussier of the white supremacist think tank American Renaissance. The emails reveal how Yiannopoulos relied on Saussier for editorial direction and even trusted him enough to spike stories. Yiannopoulos freely discussed the importance while collaborating with racists not to be branded one himself. I have been struggling with this. I need to stay, if not clean, then clean enough, Yiannopoulos wrote after an acquaintance advised him to avoid being identified as a white supremacist. Yiannopoulos describes Saussier in another email as, quote, my best friend. He's a bitchy gay guy. They're calling him a Nazi, and he's oh. a fucking gay Jew. <laughs> it is one of the funniest things ever. They're calling this guy a Nazi and a white supremacist. Leaked documents strongly imply that the Mercers funded Yiannopoulos following his resignation from Breitbart News for making statements appearing to condone pedophilia. Yiannopoulos resigned from Breitbart News in a press conference on February 21st, 2017. Less than a week later, in an email titled Entity and addressed to a handful of staffers, his lawyer, and Breitbart editor-in-chief Alex Marlowe, Yiannopoulos mentioned the Mercers as funders of his new venture. The leaked documents also show an email from Breitbart News' Alan Bakari, where he mentions having access to an online account of Yiannopoulos. According to Bakari, one of Milo's passwords references Kristallnacht, which was a 1938 riot against Jews carried out by Hitler's stormtroopers. And in an email to his assistant, Yiannopoulos shared the password to his email account, which referenced the Night of Long Knives, which was the purge of the socialist wing of the Nazi party. Also leaked was a video filmed by Devin Saussier of Yiannopoulos singing America the Beautiful, followed by him doing the Nazi salute. I'm thinking about the part that has substantive content crazy content, but it is substantive. Uh, it does give answers. I mean, to people who, who for the last 30 years have seen their uh, wages, uh, income stagnate or decline, uh, uh, benefits decline, uh, uh, services decline, their 
nothing for the children, you know, the world's out of control. Uh, these are the people who on polls, maybe 80% of them, say uh, the country's going in the wrong direction, the, uh, the government's run by the few and the special interests, not the people and so on. You know, they're not wrong. Uh, this is all happening to them. And the answers that they're getting from, say, you know, Rush Limbaugh, Michael Savage, the rest of them, are, uh, well, we have an answer. Uh, the rich liberals uh, own everything. They own the corporations. They run the government. Uh, they uh, run the media. And they don't care about people like you. They don't care about the flyover people between the East Coast and the West Coast. They only care about uh, giving everything you work for away to, uh, you know, to illegal immigrants. And that's an answer to something. It's a terrible answer, but it is an answer. Now, they're not hearing anything else. And the memory that comes to my mind, again, I don't want to press the analogy too hard, but I, I think it's worth thinking about, is late Weimar Germany. There were people with real grievances. The Nazis gave them an answer. It's the fault of the Jews and the Bolsheviks, and we've got to protect ourselves from them. And that'll take care of your grievances. And we know what happened. Uh, Germany in the 1920s was you know, the most civilized, the peak of Western civilization in the, in the arts and the sciences, uh, uh, highly functioning democratic institutions. A decade later, it was you know, the pits of human history. We'll